Are you guys using the wrong primer? Today we took a fender and we sprayed etch primer, epoxy primer, urethane, and poly. We started by preparing this fender by stripping all of the e-coat off the face of this. We used a die grinder with a three inch strip disc. You can get strip discs from different manufacturers, but they are good because they are removing the material and any body filler, primers, paints. It's not going to take off any excessive rust, but at least it will not remove any metal to make any of the fender thin. The other thing that you can use is the SCT that is sold by Eastwood. You can also find these at Harbor Freight. Um, they are basically the same thing, but it comes with a barrel drum. This is the 40 grit. We have found that the other grits that they sell for these don't quite strip as good, but the 40, even though they call it a 40, it's more of a strip disc. And then the other option would be a Makita sander with also a bigger strip disc. And then finally, when you get done stripping all of the material and e-coat off, you need to give it a tooth so that way everything has something to adhere to and it must be used with a 80 grit. It doesn't have to be used, but 80 grit on a DA, an orbital sander, is best to get a nice uniform scratch. That way any product that you're going to be going over this will adhere to. Just being completely transparent with you guys, we have received this 69 Camaro fender from Auto Metal Direct. It is who we use for all of our projects. They are a very good quality with amazing customer service. And we never really have any major fitment issues. Everything fits pretty good. We'd also like to thank Temecula Valley Paint. They are the ones who are for the cause of ed educating you guys. They have sponsored us with all of the primer materials that you're seeing on this fender. There are really only three primers. You have a urethane, an epoxy, and a polyurethane. You guys are used to seeing DTMs and hybrids and all these different primers. Throw that out the window. A DTM and a hybrid is just one of those three primers that has chemical makeup that is different to those three that so you can apply them to metal. Like a DTM is considered a direct to metal. That is it. Now we're going to start with epoxy primer. Epoxy primer on this fender is from the center line to the middle and up. Epoxy primer, when you are prepping it, you have to have that DH surface that we showed you guys with the fender. However, when you go over that 80 grit, can you wax and grease the panel or do you have to acid wash it? And if you guys are wondering how to acid wash, go back in our videos and look in the description. There will be a link to that video. But you can, it's, there's not like a right or wrong way on putting epoxy over bare metal other than it needs to be clean. You can use wax and grease remover. You do not want to use waterborne cleaner. That's two different things. Waterborne cleaner will cause flash rusting to the bare metal that you just spent all that time prepping. Now wax and grease, you can wipe everything down to get all your oils off your, if you have anybody that touched the car or you pushed it into the booth. And then when it comes to acid washing, that's eliminating everything. Now, again, there's not a wrong way. You can do either one and epoxy, as long as it has a tooth, will adhere just fine to that metal. Epoxy primer is commonly used in the restoration industry. It is encapsulating the bare metal from moisture. That's what epoxy is truly used for. You don't want the moisture getting to the metal and you don't in the restoration industry, you don't typically do, and I don't want to say that you don't always do it because there are some shops that do, we don't do any body work over bare metal. Everything we do for a high quality paint job is going to be sealed up. That way no moisture can get through to those products and you can move forward with doing your body work on top of the epoxy. Now, when we talk about an epoxy, there are different chemicals that you can get when it comes to the variety of epoxy primers. Now, VP2050 is considered a DTM. A DTM is direct to metal, which is obviously an epoxy, but they call this a DTM high build, which is a hybrid, meaning all it is is an epoxy primer that has a thicker build to it so you can actually come in and scuff it up without it getting gummy in your sandpaper. Most epoxies are known to not be sandable, 
VP2050 is, and that's why it's such an awesome product. It is very strong, and when you're doing an entire panel, it encapsulates everything, and because it's so strong, if you have areas that maybe were hard to get to, it creates such a layer, plus rock chips and all the other things you're gonna get, a door ding, or when you open your door, it's a lot harder of a product. If you go to sand it, you will find that it sands a lot harder once you break through the top layer of it, it is a lot easier to sand. And then it becomes more like what we're gonna roll into next, which is a polyester. A polyester primer, in a sense, is sprayable body filler. It is a very porous product, and that's why you do not want to wet sand any kind of polyester. Polyester primer will allow things to sink into it. So if your car is going to be sitting in the shop for a while and you're spraying WD-40 and, and, and cleaning greasy parts next to it or touching it, just know that it's porous. If those things are going to soak into the surface and you're never going to get them out all the way. So it's always good to make sure that you understand where these products are being used. Now, a polyester, when you prep it, you can spray it directly over an epoxy primer. So when you're prepping it, as long as you are within the window, you need to be looking at your TDS sheet, which is a technical data sheet. If you guys Google the part number of your primer, you will find a technical data sheet where it talks about all of the characteristics for any one of these products, whether it be paint, primer, you name it. And it lists down everything from the pressures that you're gonna spray it at, recommended tip size, dry times, flash times. When you're doing these products, they have a different window. So like an epoxy, most epoxy primers have a 72 hour window that you can top coat them without having to scuff it. And when we're talking about adhesion, you either have two different kinds of adhesion, a chemical adhesion, which would be wet on wet, that you're within that window, that it's still going to stick and adhere to one another. And if you are outside that window, then you need to prep your epoxy by scuffing it up and or Brillo pad, whatever it is you're going to use. Oops. Scotch Bright, not Brillo pad. And then spray your poly over it. Then you can start all of your body work. So epoxy, you can use body filler right over the epoxy, or you can go to polyester, which is sprayable form body filler. Polyester is not typically sprayed directly over bare metal. Now these days they have uh, primers like Clausen's that does sell a DTM polyester. I don't really think, I mean, I've looked at the technical data sheet and in my opinion, there's a lot of high-end shops that are using it and they're having great results. But we, I just don't feel like it's gonna have as good of a result as the VP2050. When you are going through and you are spraying, say this is over a bare metal car, you want to make sure if it's going to sit for a period of time that it's not just that porous surface where everything can soak into it. There is also a lot of shrinkage that happens with polyester. So your time frame, if we're comparing VP2050 to any of the polyesters, there is a lot of shrinkage that happens between the two. The reason that I really like that product for the VP2050 is because the amount of shrinkage is minimal. And when it shrinks, what's happening is as you reduce all these products, that reducer has to gas off and leave the solids on the substrate. So that's what you're seeing right now is what is left, what is gassed off. Now these have all different levels of shrinkage. So you need to be cautious and mindful of knowing what industry you are in. If you are in the restoration industry, time typically isn't an essence, where if you are in the collision industry, time is when you're spraying 12 plus cars a day and shrinkage is going to happen. So if you are spraying a polyester versus that, the differences there are going to be a lot of shrinkage. You need to give this more time to have that shrinkage happen. Otherwise, if you block out the car and you think everything is perfectly straight and it's still drying, it's still shrinking, you're going to get some chop and waviness in the car. Make sure this stuff dries for a good week versus three days, four days with the VP2050, it's completely shrank and you can actually see it in the cups where 
it doesn't show a ton. And that's the biggest comparison that I can give you guys is you just look at the cup, the amount of shrinkage, you see it at raw form. Now we're going to roll into the urethane primer. The urethane primer can be found down here. Most commonly found in the collision industry. And the reason is it is a lot, uh, there's a lot more uses that you can do because they have these in a DTM form, meaning direct to metal. If it is not stated that it is a DTM, then you have to shoot a urethane over an etch primer. And an etch primer is just a chemical that is a one part, it's not a two part, it's not a 2K. And when I say 2K, meaning it has a hardener. All of these products up here have a hardener in it and then a reducer to thin it if needed. Where the etch primer is very watery and it soaks into the bare metal and it, it gets you that grip. It gets you the adhesion to where urethane is going to stick. Some of the things you guys need to know about etch primer is that etch primer and urethane typically go together. Etch primer does not like a polyester and it does not like body filler. So there is no reason that you guys need to spray your car in an etch primer to do your body work because it's going to fail, it's going to delaminate and pull off. Same thing with the polyester. Etch primer is kind of a thing of the past. This used to be a very common practice, but nowadays with having the option with all of the other primers that are a DTM, there's really not a lot of need for an etch primer. So if you have the mentality that you have to put it on so things adhere, that's not the case anymore. However, where do we use it? We would typically use it on a car that let's just say it has an extensive amount of hammer and dolly work and you want to keep it from flash rusting. Maybe you just got it back from uh, acid washing or sandblasting and you spray this chemical over it. It's, it's more equivalent to like acid washing it where you have a phosphoric coating over it because this has a very low acid content in it where it does not affect the urethane primer but it also gives you that barrier from, it's, I'm sorry, it's not a barrier from moisture, but it, the chemicals and the acid that's in an etch is holding off the flash rusting. It's not going to hold it off if you stick this outside or if you're in a high humidity area, but it will hold it off for a period of time. So you want to be cautious. The cool part about it is there's not a lot of like thickness to it. You could see the sandblasted surface and or the scratches from the 80 grit right into it. It dries almost instantly. It's like painting water over your bare metal. So then you can come in and hammer and dolly this. Maybe it takes you a week to do that. Maybe it takes you a couple months and that might hold you off. Even then when we're completely done hammer and dollying all of our metal work, I still take a DA and I take all the etch primer completely off the car and then we come back in and we use our VP2050. Going back to urethane, because it's cheaper, it's most commonly found like in a four to one mix ratio versus a two to one. It's a lot thinner, it doesn't have the mill thicknesses, it doesn't get the build. So you might find yourself priming and blocking and priming and blocking more than if you had a primer that was going to do everything in one pass. One pass, one round of priming. Urethane is used to seal up Obviously, if it's a DTM, you're sealing up your metal. So this is not porous, and you're making sure that you're sealing everything up. Urethane can be found in a high build, a multi-purpose. It can be found as a sealer. And in our case, we only use it as a sealer. Because we're using VP2050 from start to finish, the only thing we're using it for is that the sealer Meaning if you're wet sanding your car and you're almost ready for paint, all of your body work is done. And let's say you have a couple spots that rub through and you have body filler showing. If you were to take your base coat and you were to go over that area that rubbed through, you're going to have it soak up because it is porous. Body filler is porous, same thing with polyester. So if polyester is showing, then you need to seal it and sealer's purpose is to make sure that you have one uniform coat. That way your base coat, your single stage, or whatever it is you're going to spray for paint is going over it uniformly. And you can also get sealers where they're tinted so that way you don't have 
Maybe you get a rock chip and you see the gray primer below. You can also tint it so that way you don't see it as much and you use less paint because it's already almost the color that you're going to spray. There's a lot of advantages to a sealer. Just know that all you need to know is that you have the main primers, urethane. Urethane comes in a thicker or a thinner for a sealer. You have your epoxy. It's either not sandable or it's sandable and it's a high build like what we use. And then when you come over here to polyester, it's either a DTM or it's not. So understanding where you put these primers and when you apply them, none of them are technically wrong. You just have to know what they are used for and you can stack them as long as you are following a technical data sheet. I used a Walcom 1.8 tip for every one of these products. You're just going to adjust your needle and your fan to be able to achieve the finish that you want. Now that you guys have done all that work and everything is sealed up and ready for paint and you want to know how to do a mirror finish, we got a video for you, link in the description.